let's talk about how to set up Calendly. So you get in there and you see this, but you'll have less thingies, of course. And you click new event type. And of course, we're going to be doing this for podcasting. So we want to do one on one. And we would call this whatever your podcast name is. And I call it, uh, I call mine the project. Oops. Egg show appearance because this is what the people see and then here I always use zoom now I took the time to integrate it so let's really quickly talk about how to integrate zoom uh, you go over here to integrations I'm gonna open it in a new tab so we can come right back to this and in the integrations tab you look for zoom and you click it and you just follow the instructions and it's super super easy so that's how you set up the zoom integration which is what I'd suggest using for uh, recording your podcast so anyways you set this up you put zoom and by the way this automatically creates a zoom link for the, the conference which will be awesome or for the interview I'm reading conferencing so here I would just put please block out you know however many minutes 60 minutes for this show audio only or you may say you may say this is audio and video or whatever just like give them the, uh, the heads up on what it's going to be and then you want to click next and then you set the event duration uh, 60 then of course you set the date range of uh, whenever you want people to be able to schedule this with you set your time zone um, then you set your availability so I do mine from 12 p.m. or yeah 12 p.m. so noon to 9 p.m. because I don't want to have to wake up first thing in the morning and do an interview. I like to have a morning routine. That's just me. And you can also copy from a different event uh, that, or a different type of, uh, I think it's, they call it events. Yeah, a different type of event that you've already created. Then you can go to advanced and you show, uh, you see some things right here. Um, this is kind of important, uh, the availability increments. I like to do... Um, I like to do it every 30, 30 minutes or 60 minutes just because it's a nice round number. And then max events per day. Depends how uh, ambitious you want to be. I've set mine at two. Um, I find that two interviews a day is a good level that I can um, still give it my all and still get in a good a good volume of interviews. I was doing up to five or six a day. That was rough. Well, man, that was really rough. So. Uh, I'd suggest between one to two. If you're just starting out, I do max one a day and then uh, work your way up from there. Uh, but really, it's it's whatever you think is best for you. And then prevent events less than a certain number of hours away. I do 72. I want to have at least three days notice to make sure that uh, I know um, something's coming up so that I can make last minute changes if I need to, or I don't have to make last minute changes, but if I need to, at least I have three days to do it. And then event buffers is like how much time before or after the event. I like to put, uh, I like to put a few minutes, um, a few minutes beforehand just to make sure whatever I'm doing, I have time to travel back to my studio. And then after the event, I like to give a good 30 minutes or so to really make sure I have a chance to like debrief with the guest, talk with them, discuss whatever we need to discuss, and then um, recharge before my next meeting or my next appointment or whatever that may be. Uh, I would definitely recommend hiding it from your main Calendly page um, because you know if 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 it get if your main Calendly page is just out there, but the right person that you want to interview find or the the wrong person that you don't want to interview finds this event then they're going to be on your calendar they're going to take up your valuable calendar space so i would hide it and just send it out to the specific people that you want to send it out to um, again customize these how you want um, and then again make sure that these hours are how you want them and you can of course scroll here here you can pick specific uh, weeks here uh, it's pretty sweet so then you click next and you get to your questions now this is important Right, because you need to get enough information from them to where you don't have to chase them for info afterwards. So I usually ask for, and this is, I have a team that uh, grabs this stuff and formats it properly. So if you're doing it yourself, um, what I would say is just ask for 
your official bio and require it. And they'll sometimes they'll put like a link to their website. Sometimes they'll actually take the time to paste it in there. But you want to have the bio to use in your show notes. It's really helpful. And then if you really want to get advanced and if you t- if you want to take the time to do this, do this. Uh, if you have a team, it's better because it saves you a lot of time. But um, your official headshot URL. And this is really good because if you have a um, if you have like a, a thumbnail that you want to use, like a, or a logo rather for each different um, no no it's a thumbnail for each different uh, medium, right? So let's say you're doing a video and audio podcast, you'll have a YouTube thumbnail, you'll have one for your actual podcast, like on iTunes. So those are different things. So you might want to use you know, a, a guest specific thumbnail that they would be inclined to share. So you might want to take their headshot, put it in there somewhere. But again, if you don't have a team, this can be kind of time consuming. So if you're just doing it by yourself, these are really the three important things here. Uh, if you have a team that can handle the graphics, then these are the four critical ones. And then what I actually do, and this is just my own personal preferences, um, I put in a little radio box and I just make them confirm that. Um, that they've read a certain specific guideline. So, for example, I put there, I put, please confirm you will not pitch on this show, right? I just, I don't want people marketing to my audience. I just don't like that. See, I agree that I will not pitch. I had that previously written. Um, It's a bit aggressive, but that's just what I do. So then they click it, and then you know that they have at least agreed to it, um, so that can save you some headache and stuff after. Anyways, once you get the questions uh, ready to rock, then you save and close. Then you set up your notifications. Uh, calendar invites are, you know, totally cool. Um, email confirmations also totally cool. You can personalize it however you want. Um, and there's some obviously some cool uh, uh, personalization um, things here that you can use their questions and answers. So that's always really cool. Uh, calendar invite again you could personalize that it's pretty sweet Um, I personally do email confirmations Um, that's just me and then if they uh, if you need to cancel um, this is how you uh, personalize that I definitely turn on text reminders and I definitely turn on email reminders to remind them about the event and I set up a ton of them Um, so the text reminder of course you know, you just uh, personalize that how you want, and then you set the reminders of when they show up. And then, of course, for email reminders, you can personalize that and send it. I send one an hour before every time. Uh, I like to do 24 and an hour um, for the email reminders, and then I like to do for the text reminders, you know, you might do 12 hours before, and then you might do like you might do like 10 minutes before or something, you know, just give them a lot of heads up so that they know, uh, because they're busy people. So you want to make sure that they show up for it or else everybody's wasting their time. Mostly you. So pick all this stuff, confirmation page. Um, you can add a custom link here. I send them to a confirmation page asking my guests to leave a review on iTunes, just cause I think that's what I need the most. Uh, but you can redirect to an external site or you can display the Calumny confirmation page with another custom link there. So it really depends um, what you want here. Uh, this isn't really critical to your process. So I will just leave that default. And then if you need to accept payments, this is where you would do it. Uh, but for an interview, typically I don't see people charging for their interviews. So that's how you do it. Um, you can then view your live page here and you just copy your link address and then you can send that out to people one other thing actually you want to go and make sure your calendar connections are set up right so you want to go here and you want to set up your calendar stuff you want to make sure to add a calendar account and to configure it to where it checks for conflicts on all of your different event types and that it adds the calendar in the specific event type that you wanted this is critical this is how it checks for conflicts so that's really really important and look just take the time to go through here and really configure your settings how you want. It doesn't take that much time. And once you set it up once, it's there forever, and it is super, super helpful. So uh, I hope this answered all of your questions. If you have any more that I didn't answer in this video, then leave a comment below. Thanks. Have a good one.